on my friends welcome back to the channel today we have a super exciting new tutorial i also hope you enjoy the new set that we've got in the background i wanted to pay more attention into the viewing experience make it more enjoyable to watch the video so i hope you guys do like this new format either way today's video if you remember a couple of months back i made this freeze frame morph tutorial you guys really loved how that turned out you can do it on faces you can do it on shoes any different object to create this crazy looking effect Today we're going to take that to the next level. We're going to take the same concept but we're going to apply some advanced techniques such as facial tracking to create the look that you saw in the intro. Let's hop right into Adobe Premiere and After Effects. But before we do, a quick word from the sponsor of today's video, Skillshare. Today's video is sponsored by Skillshare. Lately I've been feeling a lot more inspired to learn something new. Skillshare has been the answer to this. I've been diving into multiple courses trying to absorb as much info as I can so that I can apply that to my own work. Skillshare offers classes designed for real life and all the circumstances that come with it. These lessons can help you stay inspired, express yourself, and introduce you to a community of millions. Personally, I've been watching this character building course by Kristen D, plus this animation station mini class with Neil Patrick Harris. Skillshare is also incredibly affordable, less than $10 a month with an annual subscription. If you're interested, the first 1,000 people to click the link in the description will get a free trial of Skillshare premium membership. All right, guys, so step number one, you're going to want to take your footage. Now, I use my face for this. You don't have to use it on somebody's face. You can do this with any random object as well. You just need to make sure that you're able to match it up with some images that you can find on the internet. Now, the key to making this effect look good is getting some perspective. So what I did when I recorded, I just kind of turned my face like this, up and down, and I didn't turn all the way but I just did like a slight pivot so that when we track it on our face you can see that 3d depth so once you have your footage let's go and gather all of our assets all of the images that we want to put on our face or wherever you guys can use Google images they have some helpful little built-in tools where you can search for large file size so you can get nice HD files you can also filter by Creative Commons like so you don't run into any copyright issues I like to use pexels.com they have royalty free images there'll be a link down below if you want to check that out create a folder download a bunch of those and have those all ready to go I even picked up a few PNG images throw that into our edit at the end when we're gonna customize and add some glitches and post effects so now that you have everything let's hop into Adobe After Effects and get started setting this up all right so here we are within After Effects we're ready to get this started before we bring in all those images that we save from pixels or Google images we're gonna first set up the track for our face here to do that follow these steps to so go up to your toolbar in the top left if you see any other shape here just hold down alt and click until you see your ellipse tool. You can also just click Q on your keyboard, draw a good size circle around your face. So starting at the beginning of the timeline here, let's open up our mask options. Click M on your keyboard to do so. We're going to keyframe the mask path here. So click this little stopwatch. Now let's drag on our timeline here. And anytime our face leaves this circle, let's adjust the circle so that it's still around our face. So all you need to do is if you just click on your mask, hold down control on your keyboard. On Mac, I think it's command. Grab the edge of your mask and just adjust. And you'll see now we're making keyframes for that. And drag, hold down control and adjust. Hold down control and adjust. And there you go. So once you've completed this, this is what it should look like. It should look like your face or whatever it is you're trying to create this effect on in a circle, highlighting it. Now let's go ahead and right click on this footage and pre-compose it. Just name this face. We're going to click move all attributes into the new composition. So now you just have, again, your face with a circle. What we're going to do here, and this is a very important step, so make sure you don't skip on this one. You're going to find this layer in your project bin up here. So you can even just right click on it. You can go to reveal and you can go to reveal composition in project. Here it is right here. Linked composition number six. We're going to click and drag that onto this new composition button and drag it right there. That'll place it in its own new composition. Now we can right click on the footage here. We can go to track and stabilize and we can click track camera. The reason we're tracking this way instead of After Effects facial track is we want to get as much perspective tracking information as we can. All right, so once your camera has solved over on the left in your effect controls, you should now see this 3D camera tracker. And if you select it, you should see all these X's only on your face. Now we don't need this circular mask anymore. So let's just double click here on this layer and you can just click M to bring up your mask options and you can now delete that mask off your footage. Let's pop back into the composition we are working on. So this one linked comp number 10. And if you select your 3D camera tracker again, you'll see that we have the track points 
only on our face and that's why we do it this method we want to concentrate it on only our face and not waste any computing power trying to track anything in the background so like i explained earlier this is why we use this tracking method we want to see the perspective we want to see things turning so that when we track things on it turns in a nice accurate way and find a nice clear spot where we can create our solid so using your bullseye, create solid and camera. And now we can even make this track solid a bit smaller and press play. If you guys are having crazy track solids or maybe the track points are too small, try the track again. Make sure you're using crisp footage, well lit, not too much motion blur so you can get the best possible results from your motion tracking. Now you'll see as I turn my head, this track solid is turning with it. So we have that perspective all tracked and ready to go. So in my layers here, this track solid number one, I'm going to right click on it and I'm going to rename it to face track info. So let's open up the folder that I told you to save earlier. Mine is right here. It's just called faces. And when I and I downloaded tons of these different YouTubers. Again, here's my props folder for afterwards. I'm going to start with each part of the face that we'd like to track on. So I'm going to do mouth, nose, left eye, right eye and hair. So to make this nice and easy to understand, we're going to go up to the top left in our project bin. We're going to click the new composition button once more. I'll make my 1920 by 1080 the same size as this composition here. All right, so let's start opening up some of these images. I forgot to do it when it first popped up, but let's just rename this new composition to left eye. We're going to start with that. You can just grab images of these faces and we're going to start aligning them the way that we need them to. You only need to press two keys on your keyboard to start setting this up. The first key is the S key and that's your scale. So you can click S to bring up scale on this layer and you can scale it up. And then let's bring in our next image. The same exact thing. We're going to click S for scale and we're going to scale this one down. We want to align these eyes. So the way to do that is click T. That's the other key you need to know. T on your keyboard and you'll see opacity. Now you can lower that and now you can use that to align these up. So again, clicking S, scale it. Once that's lined up, click T, make that 100%. So this is where you decide how fast you want your animation to be. So I like using it. I like going about six frames. It depends on how fast you want it, how slow you want it. So if I click page down on my keyboard, I can go over frame by frame. So one, two, three, four, five, six. Select this layer, control shift D to split it and then delete the excess. Let's show the top layer, control shift D here. And the exact same thing, use page down on your keyboard, one, two, three, four, five, six, control shift D. So you see what we're doing here, it goes from this layer to that layer. And it's pretty quick, because it's only six frames. If you want it to be longer, you stretch it out. If you want it to be shorter, again, you make that smaller and it's gonna happen extremely fast. So it may depend on how many of these you want to cycle through in the animation. You also don't even have to make these cycle through. Maybe you just wanna track different facial features and not go through all the extra work of creating the flashy animation. That's completely fine. But either way, let me show you how to continue through here. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create about four or five of these for each facial feature. So left eye one, so here's two. Let's keep dragging these in. We'll start this where the other one ended. One, two, three, four, five, six. Control shift D to split it. And the exact same thing. Just grab this bottom layer and extend it a bit. And then we can click T on our keyboard and opacity down and scale down to match those up. And since we're only doing with the left eye, you really only need to align the eyes. 100 opacity, get rid of that little excess frame and just keep repeating those steps. All right, guys, so I created my first little cycle animation here for the left eye. If you were to look at the left eye of all of these pictures and just stare in that area, it should all be in the exact same relative area. We can make a little adjustments as we go along, but let's keep going through here. So back into our main composition, let's now find that left eye composition that we were working on and drag it into here. So on the left in our project bin here, I know mine is pretty cluttered because I was experimenting a bunch of this before. Here it is, so we'll drag that composition in here. So now we're going to link this composition that we just made to the face tracking info that we made earlier. So to do this, it's ex so to do this, it's extremely easy. All you need to do is enable this top composition as a 3D layer. So make sure you click this toggle switches and modes button here until you see this 3D cube, and then simply select left eye here, check on this 3D cube layer so that it's now a 3D layer 
and you'll see it's going to be affected by our camera that we made earlier and better yet let's link it to this face track info solid so grab this little pick whip tool you'll see under parents and link again make sure you're clicking toggle switches and modes this little squiggly swirly here click and drag this for left eye onto face track info this little box and let go and then click away you can also open up left eye here open up transform and just click reset now you'll see this is on the side of our face just like how our track solid was very nice and easy now since this track solid that we started with is on the side of our face and we want this to start facing forward let's actually just create a new track solid so we'll delete that let's select our bottom footage here go to effect controls click on our 3d camera tracker i'm going to make one maybe in the middle of my face right here so create that solid and let's see what this looks like all right that's a lot better so it looks like just an orange square of a head okay, let's do the same thing let's track this left eye to this new track solid so pick whip bam like that rename that face track and you can hide this track solid just click off the visibility and let's reset that again so open this up transform reset so there you go. Now it's swiveling like how our head would be swiveling. So now we really just need to align this. So click transform. We're not going to use our position here. We're going to use our anchor point. And we're going to bring that left eye over my left eye. You can click T on your keyboard again. Or if you have your opacity open already, just lower your, your opacity. And let's start lining up that left eye. 100% opacity again. Let's go and mask out the left eye. So up here in the top left, grab your little rectangle tool and just click and drag a box over the left eye. And there you go, starting to come together. As you see, if we swivel, it follows that. It's cycling through all these different ones. Now the only issue is A, this little animation ends, so we're going to need to loop it. Another thing we can do, if you want a little bit of separation from the assets over top of the face and the face, what you can do is you can open up your face track solid here, open up the transform. You see under position, you have these three numbers. This is your X, Y, and Z axis. So you can grab the Z axis and you can just give a little bit of separation. So it's hard to see now, but when we do more of a turn, you'll be able to see it a little bit better. So let's now continue the loop of this. All we need to do is double click back into our left eye composition. And you'll see this is all the room we need to fill. So to do this, it's very easy. Just click shift and select all of these layers. Scroll to where this ends right here. Place your little timeline there. Click control D on your keyboard to duplicate. Scroll down and just find this bottom part and start the bottom right here. And then you just keep repeating those steps. So you click, drag to the end, control D, start the bottom part where your little timeline is. If you wanna save a little bit of time here, Let's just select all of these. So we'll scroll to this part, holding down shift. Let's select all these duplications, control D, and it gets a little bit cluttered, but just again, scroll to the very bottom. So we'll just find the most bottom highlighted clip. And you just need to start this bottom highlighted clip wherever your timeline figurehead is. Scroll up to the top. All right, so we should be good to go. We have a fully looped little animation here in this left eye composition. So let's back in our main composition. This should now be going all the way through and you'll be able to see what that looks like with our full rotation of our head. And you'll see, since we added a little bit of that Z distance, here's that Z axis, that's ultimately, that's ultimately what we're doing. We're affecting how close this is to our face. So that's really about it guys. Just repeat those steps for all the other facial features that you want. It does take a bit leg work, but it really is up to you how much detail you wanna put in. The video I'm working on was a 25 second video. So it did take a lot more extra work as opposed to if you were to do this on a 10 second, five second video with not so many flashy things going on at once. So don't be intimidated by this. It's not that hard. You just need to follow the steps and tweak it to your liking. So I quickly want to show you some little troubleshooting things you can do to fix up the look of this. If for some reason, one of the clips in your little eye animation here is just a little bit off or you wanna just change the look of it, instead of clicking and dragging this, don't ever do that, it'll mess up the track. What you wanna do is you want to double click in your left eye composition here. It'll automatically be in the exact spot wherever your timeline head is. So, so what you need to do is just click on the screen here find whatever layer is highlighted so right here and then you can just click and move this over a bit so say you want to move the eye over to the right 
Just click this image and move a little bit to the right, pop back and you'll see that's how you can just make a simple little adjustment without messing up your track. It's very easy. You can do this for any of the eyeballs without messing up the other ones since they're in their own layer. Again, maybe you want to raise this one up a little bit, double click in here, just click and drag it up a tiny bit back in there. There you go. Quick and easy little fix. All right, so I'm going to quickly show you again. I'm going to do the nose just to show you how we can layer these together. And then I'm just going to give you a time lapse of me doing the rest because again, it is just repeating all of the steps that I showed you previously. Start in your project bin, create a new composition. Let's name this one nose. In this composition, we're going to go ahead and find some images with the noses we want. Transform, fit to composition, and not that fit to composition. Maybe something like that. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, or six, or however long you want this to last. Again, to line it up, you grab the bottom part of this layer, just drag it out, click T on the top layer, lower the opacity, and then click S just to align those. Attention to the nose should be staring there. And as that loops through, there should be a nose in that exact pinpoint spot that you're staring at. So mission accomplished. Let's loop this up before we bring it in and uh, link it with our tracking info. So again, to do that, what you need to do, hold down shift on your keyboard and just click to select them all. Drag to the very end. Make sure that's lined up. Control alt and mouse wheel to zoom in. Control D to duplicate. Line that up. You're lining from the very bottom clip that's highlighted, very top clip that's highlighted. Control D, line up the bottom highlighted, and just repeat those to loop it. Select this big stack, grab the bottom most highlighted, align it. All right, and we should be good to go. Let's check if that's all looped. Looks pretty good. And now let's drag in nose from our project bin here. This one drag that in again what we're going to do step number one you always make this into a 3d layer first parent this to your face track so just pick whip like that and to reset the size of this so that it's not all warping on our screen just open this up transform reset now that's aligned with our track solid and beautiful really nice results on this one open up the transform options for our nose anchor point it over the face Lower the opacity so we can see what's going on there. Draw a little rectangle over the nose like that. All right, so here's our first real issue. As you see, if I scroll, if I scroll through here, the nose is kind of just flat on our face. Let's do the same thing we did with the eye here. Let's just raise the Z axis a little bit. So grab it, drag it up. Not too much where it goes over the eye, but maybe something like that. You can always just toss a little keyframe in there. So let's open up nose. Let's keyframe all of these. And you don't want to go crazy with this because it'll make it a lot less smooth, a little jittery. But we can add one little keyframe where we just raise the Z axis of this nose a little bit here and um, maybe even a tiny bit of rotation. All right, guys, so repeat those steps. Here's a timeline. Uh, here's just a little time lapse of me repeating those steps and uh, finishing off the face. Once we have all the facial features finished up, we can go ahead and start customizing and adding some cool little post-work effects to finish it off nice and ready to export. All right, guys, that wraps this one up. Please leave a like if you did enjoy. It means a lot. It goes a long way. Subscribe if you want to see more content like this, if you want to learn some cool new things. And as always, guys, thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for supporting. And I'll see you guys in the next one.